All right, we are on workbook lesson 123 of A Course in Miracles. <clears throat> this lesson is, I thank my father for his gifts to me. I thank my father for his gifts to me. Following on the heels of the last two less last three lessons, two lessons, forgiveness is the key to happiness, lesson 121. And lesson 122, forgiveness offers everything I want. Today, I thank my father for his gifts to me. Eight paragraphs. Here we go. Paragraph one. Today, let us be thankful. We have come to gentler pathways and to smoother roads. There is no thought of turning back and no implacable resistance to the truth. A bit of wavering remains, some small objections and a little hesitance, but you can well be grateful for your gains which are far greater than you realize. Paragraph two, a day devoted now to gratitude will add the benefit of some insight into the real extent of all the gains which you have made, the gifts you have received. Be glad today in loving thankfulness. Your father has not left you to yourself, nor let you wander in the dark alone. Be grateful he has saved you from the self you thought you made to take the place of him and his creation. Give him thanks today. Paragraph three. Give thanks that he has not abandoned you and that his love forever will remain shining on you for, forever without change. Give thanks as well that you are changeless for the son he loves is changeless as himself. Be grateful you are saved. Be glad you have a function in salvation to fulfill. Be thankful that your value far transcends your meager gifts and petty judgments of the one whom God established as his son. Paragraph four, today in gratitude, we lift our hearts above despair and raise our thankful eyes, no longer looking downward to the dust. We sing the song of thankfulness today in honor of the self that God has willed to be our true identity in him. Today, we smile on everyone we see and walk with lightened footsteps as we go to do what is appointed us to do. Paragraph five, we do not go alone, and we give thanks that in our solitude, a friend has come to speak the saving word of God to us. And thanks to you for listening to him. His word is soundless, if it be not heard. In thanking him, the thanks are yours as well. An unheard message will not save the world, however mighty be the voice that speaks, however loving may the message be. Paragraph six. Thanks be to you who heard, for you become the messenger who brings his voice with you and lets it echo round and round the world. Receive the thanks of God today as you give thanks to him, for he would offer you the thanks you give since he receives your gifts in loving gratitude and gives them back a thousand and a hundred thousand more than they were given. He will bless your gifts by sharing them with you. And so they grow in power and in strength until they fill the world with gladness and with gratitude. Paragraph seven, receive his thanks and offer yours to him for 15 minutes twice today. And you will realize to whom you offer thanks and whom he thanks as you are thanking him. This holy half an hour given him will be returned to you in terms of years for every second. Power to save the world eons more quickly for your thanks to him. Paragraph eight, receive his thanks and you will understand how lovingly he holds you in his mind, how deep and limitless his care for you, how perfect is his gratitude to you. Remember hourly to think of him and give him thanks for everything he gave his son, that he might rise above the world, remembering his father and his self. I thank my father for his gifts to me. Take a moment, <laughs> take a day, take a day of gratitude, a day of thankfulness. Um, and really in reality, every, every moment can be filled with, with gratitude. You know, it, it's there in the back of your mind. The gratitude is there, even if you're not consciously thinking it versus the unconscious programming of the ego. So we're, so we're basically repatterning our mind <laughs> to think 
even unconsciously, according to the Holy Spirit, right? So that even our unconscious mind is becoming uh, more and more in line with this idea of just gratitude and acceptance and love and forgiveness. And, uh, you know, it's not everyone is calling that in, right? But, but, um, and some people might even think, I was, th I was thinking I was, as I was reading this, the, what some people think, which is that A Course in Miracles is like mind control or thought control or brainwashing or, <laughs> you know, some people have said it's a CIA project. Uh, Bill was working for the CIA, so it's, pro it's part of uh, MK Ultra or something. <laughs> um, and that's that's just you know the the tendency to 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 paranoia that we all have, right? To be paranoid about these things. Um, we all know that forgiveness works. You know, you don't need the course. You don't need the course of miracles to tell you that. You don't need a course of miracles to tell you that 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 love is what we're all seeking you know we all we all know that we all and we all know what love is the course is just coming to to finish off the job to or to help us finish off the job right it's saying well all right if you if you feel that way then why not um do something about it <laughs> you know why why not align yourself with that instead of going back and forth as you do, right? And when it comes down to it, the words are easy here. You know, it's easy to say all these things. It's easy to read these things. It's easy to talk about them. It's easy to, to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is all great. And I, you know, I believe this, <laughs> but, but you know, it's the hard part is actually putting it into practice, you know, applying it. The execution, <laughs> the execution in, in a good way, not not the bad way, right? It's the execution of of the words that is the hard part. Putting it into practice. So, let's read this a little bit, and we'll talk about maybe some of the finer points here. Paragraph one. Today, let us be thankful. We have come to gentler pathways and to smoother roads. This is this is a common theme that Jesus keeps talking about. How you know, we've come a long way just picking up the course and taking the course seriously. You know, we're showing up, we're showing up for ourselves. we're showing up for our well-being and our, and ultimately our liberation, right? Our, our freedom. Um, so we're on our way. We're not wholly insane, as Jesus says, you know, not, we're not wholly insane anymore. <laughs> we were insane before, but now we're, we're, um, becoming saner by the day. There is no thought of turning back and no implacable resistance to the truth. Implacable is an interesting word. Um, it just means like, um, like, no way. I ain't going. I'm, no way that I'm going to change my mind, right? I have a fixed idea about something. I have a fixed belief. I have frozen thinking. And I will, I will not change that. I will not ever change that, right? That's that's the, the ego talking. That's that's the ego in terms of thinking in terms of sin, right? Sin is like something you can't change. Some, sin is something you can't correct. And a, and a thought, an idea in our mind can be like that, right? It can be frozen. It can be like, this is a fixed belief. I will never, I, I can never even question that, right? Can't question that. Um, so no implacable resistance to the truth, a bit of wavering remains, right? We still are wavering some small objections and a, and a little hesitance, but you can well be grateful for your gains, which are far greater than you realize. Two paragraph two, a day devoted now to gratitude will add the benefit of some insight into the real extent of all the gains, which you have made the gifts you have received. Be glad today in loving thankfulness. Your father has not left you to yourself, nor let you wander in the dark alone. So today we're just remembering how far we've come. And it's hard, many times it's hard to see how far you've come unless you've taken before and after pictures. Most of us don't have the before and after pictures. 
but we can look back and remember maybe how we were in the past and how deep we were in our misery and you know in our heartbrokenness and our suffering and our agony and how hard it was to let go of certain things right and now it might be it's getting easier and easier by the day right because we're, we're we're putting all this into practice now so jesus is saying you know all right let's remember and be thankful for that you know we've come a long way baby as the song goes um be grateful he has saved you from the self you thought you made to take the place of him and his creation give him thanks today right he saved you from the from the ego self right the ego egoic self he's reminded you hey that's that's not you that's not your true self right so gratitude right the attitude of gratitude paragraph three give thanks that he has not abandoned you and that his love forever will, will remain shining on you forever without change all right god can't abandon because you know god would never abandon because god does not change <laughs> god has not done anything god has not gone anywhere it is we that have um dreamed this dream right we've, we've chosen to dream this dream um god is still god god has not never changed it could never change so it's not even about abandoning it's that we have abandoned we have abandoned god you know we have abandoned our true self give thanks as well that you are changeless just as god is for the son he loves is changeless as himself be grateful you are saved be glad you have a function and salvation what? to fulfill what? be thankful that your value far what? transcends your meager gifts and petty judgments of the one whom god established as his son right? what was she wants you to come to her bud go go down to her okay she wants to talk to you He was just calling you, bud. Let me just let me finish this, bud. Go go see her, okay? Thanks, bud. All right. So we're gladness. We're being glad, not sad, not mad. <laughs> right? We're not we're not sad. We're not mad. We're not bad. We're glad. Because I'm glad. I'm glad. You know it. Um. So, right, we, we're saved. <laughs> you're now saved. You've always been saved, right? You are, you're, you've always been safe and you've always been saved. You've just forgotten. And you've, and you've taken on a false identity that um, has really gone nowhere if you really look honestly at it. Paragraph four. Today in gratitude, we lift our hearts above despair and raise our thankful eyes, no longer looking downward to the dust. We sing the song of thankfulness today in honor of the self that God has willed to be our true identity in him. Today we smile on everyone we see and walk with lightened footsteps as we go to do what is appointed us to do. So we smile, right? We smile on everyone knowing that we're on our way right we're on our way we may not be all the way there we certainly are not but we're we're definitely on our way now right i've seen all good people turn their heads each day so so uh satisfied i'm on my way we're on our way um and we can sing the, the song of thankfulness right we're, we're humming walking on our way with lightened footsteps smiling as we go singing a song <laughs> um of gratitude singing a song of gratitude um and just remembering that hey you know and i think you know i think the the, the important thing here is is that our true self remains untouched and as we remember that our life here gets better you know it's still an illusion but we're going to live more and more the happy dream right we will be smiling we'll we'll be happy we'll we can even we can even reach greatness in this life i i believe i think that this is this course is is bringing us to you know our greatest life ever it can it can right I, that's what i i think it's doing it, it it's 
it's helping us to understand what greatness is. Because greatness really is absence of ego, right? The, the great things that people have done have come through some deep inspiration, right? And, and letting go of fear. And that is the false self, right? <clears throat> we do not go alone, paragraph five. And we give thanks that in our solitude, a friend has come, friend with a capital F, that's the Holy Spirit, but also Jesus, to speak the saving word of God to us. And thanks to you for listening to him. His word is soundless if it be not heard. In thanking him, the thanks are yours as well. Um, the word is soundless if it be not heard. It's an interesting sentence there. Um, so it, it's kind of, I think it, what it's getting at is um, he tells you the word and you listen. And we all go higher as a result of that, right? Um, the soundless word is a good thing in a way, but it's also the word is there to be shared, right? So that others can be uplifted. And in, in uplifting others through the word, you are uplifted as well. An unheard message will not save the world. However mighty be the voice that speaks, however loving may the message be. All right, so you have to hear the message and share the message, but you don't have to share it in a way that is off-putting to people. You don't have to share it in a way that is holier than thou. You don't have to share it in a way that is um, coercive or judgmental or forceful. You can just share with a smile. And, you know, the smile on your face will say everything. Your, your demeanor, your your way of being will, will say everything. You don't have to share, share it with the wor words necessarily, you know, even though this seems to suggest that, but, but, but it's just your, your way of being will have an effect. When you are doing this practice, when you're doing this inner work, it will show on the out, outside and people will learn from that, even if they don't do it consciously, you know, they, they will, they will learn from, from how you, you are, how you are and how you are treating them and how you are treating, you know, everything. Paragraph six, thanks to you who heard, for you become the messenger who brings his voice with you and lets it echo round and round the world. So you actually become the, you become the message and the messenger. You become the Holy Spirit. You become Jesus in this world. You become the savior. And if, if that's too much right now, then you become, you know, the, the the heart and hands that bring the message. You don't have to think of I'm Jesus or I'm the Savior, I'm the Messiah. That's what this is saying. But 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 you don't have to think of it in the, in those terms if you don't want to. Receive the thanks of God today as you give thanks to Him, for He would offer you the thanks you give, since He receives your gifts in love and gratitude and gives them back a thousand and a hundred thousand more than they were given. This is something that Jesus already said earlier in the workbook that um, whatever you give, you receive back, you know, a hundred thousand fold. He will bless your gifts by sharing them with you. And so they grow in power and in strength until they fill the world with gladness and with gratitude. Um, are you yourself going to change the world so that the world is completely a world of peace and forgiveness? Maybe not, right? Maybe not. But 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 what this is getting at? Where are the keys? They're in the kitchen, bud. Look in the no, kitchen. No, I didn't check. I, I checked there, but they're, 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 they're there, bud. They they're, weren't there. They're definitely there, bud. Check check in there. I left them there. I checked. They weren't there. Um. So you might not. The world might not enter a a golden age of, of peace and prosperity and, and where there's no more war. We, ho we all hope that, there, that it will, but the world seems to be what it's always been, right? You know, you know I don't want to be cynical, and this is not cynical. This is actually more realistic that, 
that the world, let's, ha let's have no illusions about the world. The world, you know, why is this moment any different than any, than any other moment in world history? I don't think it is. Um, what this is getting at is a transformation of your consciousness. And that, that changes every, that's, that's what, that's what we're all seeking, right? And if one person achieves that, um, it's there for everyone to find, right? And everyone will find it in their own good time, right? Not everyone has to get there anytime soon. They will. You know, that's the idea with this is that everyone will go home. And I was talking about Hitler the other day. Even Hitler will, will go home, you know? And maybe, maybe th that lifetime that Hitler lived where, where that all went down, maybe he was, he was already very close, you know, because you don't, you can't judge these things. You can't judge by appearances. Hitler may have had to do what he did um, to learn his final lesson, right? Um, before he completely transcended. And we can't, we really cannot judge these things. But I'm going to do a whole video on this subject to try to go into it a little bit more deep, deeply because it is an interesting one and definitely one that people tend to bring up. You know, people always bring up Hitler. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing up Hitler because he, he's, a, he's an example in, in modern times of a just an absolutely atrocious thing that someone did. Of course, he had help, but he was the mastermind behind it or the, um, you know, the criminal mind behind it. But um, anyway, paragraph seven, receive his thanks and offer yours to him for 15 minutes twice today. So 15 minutes twice today, you would, you're going to do this. And you will realize to whom you offer thanks and whom he thanks as you are thanking him. This holy half an hour given him will be returned to you in terms of years for every second. Wow. Power to save the world eons more quickly for your thanks to him. Now, again, are you saving the world or are you saving the world that you have condemned, right? You're, I think that's really what it's getting at is that you're saving the world that you, that stood condemned in your eyes and now you're forgiving it, right? And in that forgiveness, and if you can complete that forgiveness, then, then um, the world is saved. But the world is already saved, right? It doesn't need you <laughs> to do it. It needs you to accept that it's saved. You know, that's, that's the thing here, is that you, you don't need to save the world. You need to accept that the world is already saved, right? That God has never changed, and our true self has never changed, because our true self is one with God as God created us. So, so there's, nothing, there's no problem except in our own minds. That's what needs to be saved. That, that's the world that needs to be saved. Paragraph eight, receive his thanks and you will understand how lovingly he holds you in his mind. How deep and limitless his care for you. How perfect is his gratitude to you. Remember hourly to think of him and give him thanks for everything he gave his son, that he might rise above the world, remembering his father and his self. And his son is you, right? His son, you are his son. Or if you don't like son, child, you are, you are his eternal self. Um, you are no different than God, ultimately, right? If God, cre if God created you as himself or like himself, you are the love that God created like <laughs> himself, right? You are, you are as love created you, which means that you are love and you are the love of God because there's only one love, right? The, the one love is the love of God. And you are that, right? You, you, you have to be. Because there's only oneness, ultimately. If there's only one reality, then, then, then you are it. And, and as we make that the focus, as we bring that to the forefront of everything we do and everything we think, and, and then... Everything starts to shift. You know, it's just just like Jesus said in the Gospels. Um, Chris asked me, um, 
hi, Chris, you asked me to bring in some gospel passages that are related. Well, Jesus said in the gospel, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else should be added unto you. That's the King James Version, right? Seek thee first the kingdom of heaven and all else shall be added unto you. Something like that, right? Um, well, that's what this is. This is seeking first your eternal spirit, your, etern your immortal self. Everything else will flow from that. Don't do it the other way. That's the way the world works, right? I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to make myself happy in the, in the dream, in the illusion. Well, good luck with that. You know, that, that's not going to work. <laughs> first, you, first you start with your, with your eternal immortal self. And then that will, that will bring the joy that will make everything else flow in this, in this illusionary experience that we're, that we're experiencing, that we think is so real. Um, now, I say all this, you know, and it, there's still part of me that too that that's that has some doubts and some questions and some wavering. So don't don't feel bad about that. You know, that's where forgiveness comes in, and where you just say, yeah, you know, hey, I really, I would I would love for all this to be true, and I and I see the benefits of this, and I see how it's changing my life. So I'm going to go with that. Right. I, let's leave the ultimate um, experience for when it's when it's our time. Right. That will come. Um, and let's not worry about the ultimate. You know, let's not th let theology delay us, but let's just do the practice. Right. So th thank you for doing that. Thank you for listening. And lesson 124 is next. Let me remember I am one with God. It's going to be a good one, I'm sure. And we'll see you there very soon. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to saying, see you on the brother side.